Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. We begin with breaking news. Police are now telling us that the house fire that killed two people is an apparent murder-suicide. It happened at 2101 52nd Street South just before 7.30 this morning. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley has been on scene all day. She joins us live from South Fargo with the very latest. Bailey? Yeah, Mike, Andrea, police say that the two people involved, the man and the woman involved in this apparent murder suicide lived in the north unit of this townhome you see here behind me. Police say that one of the bodies was found inside the garage while the other one was found inside the home. Now, I did just speak with the woman. She's one of three who was able to safely evacuate. She lived in the south unit of this townhome. She says she's absolutely shocked. She said she was asleep when the fire broke out this morning, but she says she didn't hear anything last night, early this morning. No types of domestic violence, nothing, no, no disputes. And Fargo police say since the early 2000s, they've only responded to this address three times. Now, Fargo police say both of those bodies have been sent for an autopsy to determine a, to determine a cause of death. They say that their identifications won't be released until tomorrow uh, as they are letting family, let the rest of family and friends know. We'll continue to keep you updated on this developing story. For now, reporting live in South Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. All right, thanks so much, Bailey. And a damage report for that home is not yet available. Another big story is the weather that's coming this way at a busy time for a lot of us. Let's get over to Hutch, who joins us with the very latest. Hutch. Thanks so much, Andrea. If you have any outdoor plans or errands to run tonight, would be the best time to get that job done. Temperatures today soared into the 50s. In fact, we're still in the 40s in the Southern Valley. 36, Fargo, 27, Bemidji, and things are changing. Here is a look at the blizzard warning that has been issued up and down the Red River Valley all the way down into the Sioux Falls area. We have a winter weather advisory for the Devil's Lake Basin, a little less snow there and also heavy snow expected in the trees of Minnesota. But because of those trees, the blizzard conditions will have less of an opportunity to flourish. The storm's just getting fired up in the Rockies of southern Montana and northern Wyoming. Here's when things get started. Essentially, the snow begins in our western counties after midnight tonight and by daybreak tomorrow, most of our area will have snow and wind combining to create some very nasty conditions. I am expecting a trace to three inches of snow in eastern North Dakota from the Southern Valley into northern Minnesota, though two to six with isolated locations getting banding snow that is heavier. So six plus will be a possibility. For tonight, temperatures will be very quiet and slowly falling through the 30s. Things get going well after the midnight hour here. I'll have hour by hour details on this system so you know what to expect. But again, if you have any places to go, now is the time to do that. Your forecast in detail in just a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. A 37-year-old man is being treated for multiple gunshot wounds after police say he got into a fight with another man. It happened before 4 this morning in the 500 block of Oak Street in Alexandria, Minnesota. A 38-year-old man was held for questioning. Police say this was an isolated incident and there's no danger to the public. A 34-year-old woman is in jail tonight accused of stabbing a man to death. It happened at 703 2nd Street in Maddock, North Dakota, just before 4.30 yesterday morning. Deputies say Kayla Thumb was found at the apartment, and the knife believed to be used in the stabbing was found in the kitchen sink. The victim, 33-year-old Monty Herman Jr., was found in a nearby apartment with multiple stab wounds. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Police in Frazee, Minnesota are looking for a driver involved in a hit and run. They say it happened on Sunday evening at about 545. The vehicle apparently ran off the road and hit an air conditioning unit before speeding off. Now, police are looking for a mid 2000s GMC Envoy or Chevy Trailblazer that's black or dark blue. It likely has damage from bumper. If you have any information on the vehicle or the driver, you're asked to contact Frazee police. Meanwhile, People are injured after getting rear-ended by a semi this morning. Police say it happened nine miles north of Hillsboro on I-29 at around 11.30 a.m. They say 70-year-old Edwin Ellers slowed down abruptly in the passing lane, and that's when he was rear-ended by a semi-truck. He and his 13-year-old passenger were both injured in the crash and taken to a hospital. The driver of the semi, Trent Four, was not hurt. 
Two stolen vehicles out of Norman County led to two arrests in Becker County. Authorities say they tried to stop two vehicles for speeding Friday morning in West Sugarbush Bush Township. But the drivers took off. One driver eventually went into a ditch, then ran away, but was arrested a short time later. Now, authorities say that they uh, arrested the other driver after he crashed. Matthew Dodd of Ogama, Minnesota, and Jackson Widmey of Detroit Lakes are in the Becker County Jail facing charges of theft, fleeing police, receiving stolen property, and felon in possession of ammunition of a firearm. Cass County deputies need your help in finding this stolen motorcycle. Authorities say that this black Kawasaki Z5M was stolen out of Horace. Now, if you see it, call authorities at the phone number on your screen, 701-241-5844. Police say they found the man they believe is responsible for smashing the windows of Senator John Hoven's office in downtown Fargo. It was reported yesterday morning. They haven't released his name yet, but detectives will forward their report to the state's attorney's office for possible charges. Starting today, the North Dakota Department of Health is reinstating contact tracing for all individuals who test positive for COVID-19. Contact tracers will notify those who have been within six feet of someone who tested positive for COVID-19 for more than 15 minutes in a 24-hour period so they can quarantine. Back in October, the department asked individuals to self-notify their close contacts because of a surge in positive cases. As of this morning, nearly 26,000 doses of coronavirus vaccine have been allocated to North Dakota. 21,000 have actually been delivered and nearly 7,000 people have received the vaccine so far. 200 doses of the Moderna vaccine arrived at the Jamestown Regional Medical Center today. That hospital will vaccinate its first employees beginning tomorrow. Critical access hospitals like theirs received the vaccine this week. Larger referral hospitals received their first doses last week. You can now do some driver license and motor vehicle transactions through your phone or tablet. It's called ND Drive, and the North Dakota Department of Transportation says it's like having the DMV right in your pocket. Through ND Drive, you can renew or request a replacement driver's license, pull up your driver's record, and even schedule a driving test. School staff dressed up in costumes today for a good cause. How much they raised is still to come on Valley News Live at 6. Unbelievable warmth down in South Dakota today. 50s, wheat, and also at 50 degrees. It was well, close to 30 degrees in Bedette as well. The sun is setting on our warm weather. A blizzard warning has been issued. Wednesday is a first alert weather day. Your forecast detailed next.